I look after the plants at the front of the college. I like to think that people receive a warm welcome when they see the plants set out on the steps and under the portico. The college was built in the 1960s by the architects Chamberlain, Powell and Bonn, who were also famous for building the Barbican. The large concrete dome dominates the white brutalist architecture and as gardeners we've answered that by creating this exuberant, maximalist, colourful display. At the moment you can see our maize plants which have grown really tall um, with their spiky flowers. We've also got the cannas here with their really rich dark red foliage and bright orange flowers. Something that a lot of people have commented on and like are our coleus. It's got really rich velvety coloured leaves and everybody likes our spider plants. Here we are in Orchard Court and people sometimes wonder where Orchard Court got its name from and it comes from um, the Orchard House which stood on this site and that was the home of Ida and Horace Darwin and Ida gave her name to Ida Darwin Hospital um, which is familiar to um, people in the city and Horace, son of Charles, um, founded Cambridge Scientific Instruments in 1885 and um, that was the foundation really of the Cambridge phenomenon which happened in the 1960s. So um, Gwen Riverat, who is Horace's niece, um, wrote about that generation of Darwin's in a book called Period Peace and um, here she mused on the garden that Ida had created on this site and she writes, um, above all in her garden her secret poet's garden where blackbirds sang all day long in the mossy apple trees and every plant was a new discovery there she made an image of paradise such as only she could have conceived and I really love that and when we came to redevelop this, this courtyard we took that as our text and uh, from it we planted apple trees um, we had a carpet of we have a carpet of 12,000 bulbs which come up in spring and um, we have a uh, borders packed with flowers which uh, students can pick um, and enjoy. Now at the other end of the court um, our founder who is Dame Rosemary Murray she um, insisted when this courtyard was being built in 1964 she insisted that the mature trees were left even though the builders wanted to remove them to make the building work much easier and uh, so now we benefit from her determination and foresight in that we have huge trees in the centre of the college and I think that's, that really makes a difference for us where we work and where we live. Oh, so we have these um, wildflower and uh, meadow areas uh, in college and uh, we do that to increase the biodiversity uh, within the college grounds. Um, they're very good for building up uh, an insect species range uh, which is in turn good for birds that can feed on the insects, cre creates um, cover for the, for the birds and also we get larger mammals as well such as uh, we get uh, foxes and deer that move through here. The foxes have um, dens which they've been building in the back of the compost heaps in some years and also the deer move through, bleed through the, the fences uh, college to college, they, they treat the, the green areas of the colleges rather like a, a corridor, a green corridor so they kind of bleed through and uh, so you'll see, um, you know, you'll see deer around, the small deer um, and also it's fun for the students, you know, they they get to see these kind of, um, especially in this age where we, we want to see wild areas, the, the students like to see the, the flowers and they like to see the, the meadows. So um, we do do walks with the students, uh, 
uh, we take them around, we explain what we're doing, and uh, we've found that it, the times of year that we are taking them around is usually when they're just about to do their exams, and it, it kind of gives them that bit of calm, takes them out of their mindset, so it gives them a, a bit of um, a respite from, from all the stress. And we found that they really enjoy it. They they love they love to see the, the insects and the flowers and all the all the wildlife as well. Uh, so it's fun for them. Um, and also, so we the other thing we do is we do uh, something called No Mow May, which is a, a national thing where people are encouraged to leave areas of lawn that we would normally uh, cut. Uh, so you're encouraged to put your lawnmower away for a month and uh, see what comes up in the lawn, what wild flowers and, um, and to make a note of what comes up. So we've done that as well and this year we've, and in previous years as well, we've had orchid species coming up, possibly up to three, three different orchid species which is uh, it's really nice to see. We had a big colony of bee orchids um, and uh, that was really special. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an important thing to do and um, um, hopefully we can keep doing it. Um, I forgot to say, we, we get, um, when we strim these areas at the end of the year, you see these big, large anthills, which is, uh, provides a lot of food for the uh, woodpeckers. We get a lot of woodpeckers, so the green woodpecker especially will come down and feed on the, uh, on the anthills. And um, a bit of a surprise when you're strimming, you come across these big mounds and that's what they are, the anthills. So yeah, here we are, this is, the, this is one of our wildflower areas, uh, which at the moment it just looks like dried grasses, uh, very thick and tufty, uh, probably feels a bit kind of rough and ready, a bit messy, but to, uh, to, the na to nature, to the natural kind of world, this is, uh, this is bread and butter, this is where they live, this provides cover and it's a very important, integral part of uh, the gardens that we have here. Here in the community gardens, we grow a wide variety of herbs and vegetables for the students to use in their own kitchens. The most popular herb is parsley, which you can use in a wide variety of dishes. But we also have herbs such as lemon verbena or mint, which you can use in herb teas. Uh, this summer we grew quite a lot of edible flowers such as nasturtiums, marigolds and borage. These look really beautiful growing among the vegetables. They're also good for pollinators such as bees and hoverflies and you can put them in your salads. Over there we have a, the Little Free Library which is good for students and staff. You can donate books and you can also read them and then put them back in again. This spring we grew a variety of lettuce and spinach for the students. It was really popular as they were able to come out every day and uh, just pick a little bit for their lunch. It's also very healthy for them. Um, after that we grew um, runner beans, tomatoes, squashes and courgettes, um, which was also popular so the staff could pick those and any students that were still here. Um, we've just replanted up these beds. We've sowed seeds, we've got onions, lettuce and carrots in the tubs here. The greenhouse behind me uh, belonged to Emma Darwin, who's Charles Darwin's wife. And when he died, um, she moved from Downhouse in Kent up to the house, which is Grove House, behind me. And this was her greenhouse. And we think that she grew pot plants and ferns in it, um, because it, there's um, four-inch um, uh, cast iron heating pipes in there. The nice thing about this greenhouse is that we think it was built before 1880 because it appears on the 1880 10 inch to the mile ordnance survey maps. And um, we think that the glass and all the wood is original, so that's before 1880. Um, the glass is a special, it's called fish scale glass and that allows the water to drain off the, the roof and keep it away from the wood. Um, so it's beautifully designed. Um, it's got some lovely features inside, all of which work. All the vents open and shut, even now, and they're, they're all in really good working order. 
So every year we grow about 8,000 plants for the garden. This is a 12 acre garden. And uh, so we need a huge number of plants, biennials, uh, tropical plants, um, and then winter bedding and wildflowers. We grow about 8,000 in the greenhouses each year um, to uh, keep, keep the place uh, full of flowers, as it were. <laughs> Behind me you can see the large uh, Musa Basdu, it's called, it's bananas. These are Japanese bananas, and they're quite hardy in Cambridge. And so we don't cover them up, they just die down. And on a cold winter, we might lose a few, but usually they grow up, they're incredibly vigorous. And um, we're, we're, we have them all around the college. Um, we also grow a lot of salvias. We have a large salvia collection. And um, I particularly like salvias because I think um, uh, when students come back uh, to college in October, we like to put on a huge, spectacular floral display for them. So we have salvias and bananas and titonias and cannas, all these very, very big, bright plants. And we just say to the new students, welcome to Cambridge, you've come to Murray Edwards College. And uh, this is a, a college with a garden. And um, that's what we're trying to say, really. Um, all these plants have to be looked after in the winter. So we pack them into Emma Darwin's greenhouse for the winter. And that's where they're stored. And they come out again in spring and we start all over again.